Hello, everyone. I would love to start the presentation with a question. How many of you have purchased a product or a service from a company and you were dissatisfied and you have never ever wanted to go back to that company again? Please raise your hands. <laughs> Almost everyone. Well, bad, bad news. You have contributed to the $75 billion cost that companies experience as a result of customer dissatisfaction. No pressure, the blame is not on you. Only 50% of the companies, in fact, all, uh, the companies, 50% of the time, they deliver marketing strategies that makes customers happy. So there is a huge gap between what the customer expects and what the company delivers in terms of marketing. There is a reached consensus among practitioners and researchers that that's a result of companies' misunderstanding of customers' expectations. According to existing literature, only 5% of the customers voice their expectations and voice their complaint. I was always impressed and intrigued by this huge gap, large gap, between the customer expectations and the company's marketing deliverables. Hence, this was the point of departure to the marketing model that I've developed to support businesses of Gary. And I guess I was just lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time. I have recently read an article in Crusader that was talking about a small business.com business report that placed Gary to be one of the 100 most attractive cities in the nation, small cities in the nations, to start a business. So how amazing is that? To develop the model, I've collected the data using, through, uh, using two different data collection stages. In the first stage, I met with the owners of small businesses uh, that were attending workshops in marketing that I was delivering. In there, I was teaching them 54 different marketing strategies that they could use in context to product, price, place, promotion, and situations when a customer is dissatisfied, he or she has experienced an incident. So I was giving them recommendations on recovery strategies that they should have used in order to make the customer happy. I've met with those owners a couple times per week several days, a couple, two times per week, so a few, for a few weeks, for about four weeks. And I came up with three main findings. The first finding was that companies were struggling to use marketing strategy practices in the adequate way to bring the customers in. The second finding was companies, they brought the customers in but the customers were experiencing incidents and the company was failing to make the customer happy and to turn that customer into a loyal one. And the third finding was customers were different. Customers in Gary are different. So one strategy might satisfy one customer and, another, and the same strategy might not satisfy the other customer. So I've moved on the second stage of the data collection. In there, I've met with owners of the small businesses into one-to-one -one meetings, interviews. And I was, I, I, I was aiming to understand more in depth what drives customers' expectations. And the information I got helped me to group customers into two different groups. The first customer type were customers that were really passionate to support to support businesses of Gary, and the second customer type were those that were more self-centric, and they evaluated the relationship with the company in context to the price. So they were more, more self-centric. After that, I have looked across all the 54 different marketing strategies, and I, I, I was trying to identify how do customers from both the groups evaluate or shape the evaluation or their perception of the marketing strategy touch point that was used
by the companies. And I have identified that those two groups were similar in only three marketing strategy touch point or practices. On the all other components, they were different. So this information helped me to provide re recommendations to businesses of Gary on how to bring customers in, but that wasn't enough. I didn't come up with recommendations to support them how to turn those customers into loyal customers. So I've used frustration aggression theory to do so, which basically suggests that you'll be able to understand a dissatisfied person, whether he or she is aggressive based on the, the language that they use. In marketing, basically aggression suggests that a customer is dissatisfied the most because he or she considers that the incident that he experienced or she experienced as being of the highest importance. Frustration refers to the moderate importance according to them, and then there are customers who are just relaxed and they didn't care about the failure. So I've used this logic and I've ranked the, the evaluations in terms of aggression, frustration, relax, and relaxation of the customer across all the 54 different touch points. That resulted into subgrouping of customers into six different subgroups. So we have aggression, aggression, Relax, frustration, 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 aggressive, relax, 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 and aggressive, frustrated customers. Then I came up with strategies, marketing strategies, that were recommended to businesses to be applied when dealing with all the types of customers. So recommendations for, each, for, for customers for each of the customer subgroup. To make the life easier for the employees, I have automated everything. So I've developed a platform which has four different stages. The first stage provides deliverables or determinants that help the employee to identify what type of customer the employee is dealing with. After that is identified, then the platform sends the employee directly to the second page which provides solutions, marketing solutions that the company, the employee should use in order to make the customer happy regardless that she or he was dissatisfied. Then the platform automatically follow ups with the customer to ensure that the relationship between the customer and the company is there and the customer is happy. On the next stage, the, the final stage, the platform provides promotional strategies to the, co to the company that basically tells the company, okay, those are the marketing strategies that you should use to further communicate with the customer. When I think of this model, I think of the statement by Khalil Gibran, work is love made visible. And the reason why I think about that is that I really loved working on this project, addressing the research gap and supporting businesses of Gary. The visibility is the platform itself, which can easily be turned into an app. And I truly believe that this would support businesses in Gary specifically, but also those in Northwest Indiana. Thank you.